Uh, my name is Paul Wraith. I'm the Bronco Chief Designer. And uh, yeah, I've you can probably tell from my accent, I haven't always been in uh, North America. Uh, I actually spent quite a lot of my career in uh, Europe, where I was working on passenger cars and commercial vehicles, e-bikes, racing cars, all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, when I came over here, um, I had this amazing opportunity to start scratching away at this thing called a Bronco. And it's just become my whole world. <laughs> so how does that feel getting tasked with you know, what's no less than an American icon, you're obviously coming at it from a unique perspective. Uh, <clears throat> so I think the unique perspective might have helped a little bit because it enabled me to, I uh, hadn't got a lot of emotional um, uh, resonance with it. And I was, it was all about learning. Um, and actually one of the interesting things at the beginning of the project was when we were in really early days, you know, meetings would form. And at the beginning of the meetings, we have these the mad, moments where people were sort of you know waiting for things to kick off and they'd say well i'll tell you what a bronco should be paul and out would come the cell phone with all the pictures and out would come the wallet with the pictures and out would come the hot wheels cars um and that those those messages were all over the place but they were fascinating uh, we had everything from the the trucks that the guys were looking to buy on um bring a trailer all the way through to the pictures of themselves in their dad's trucks when they were when they were kids you know um, and it was, it was fascinating to see that. And, and it became a little bit overwhelming, actually, getting a sense of what we were trying to, what we were trying to um, honor. Um, I was going to ask you, did you have the sense of the, the gravity of that vehicle and the name and the history when you got into this? And, or was it something that you figured out piecemeal over time? <clears throat> it, was, it was a little bit, it, well, it's been, a, it's been a learning process throughout. And, I, and I, we're still learning. Um, but yeah, it was it was it felt like a very steep climb initially, but we just got on with it. So, Paul, one of the things that really struck me when you when we saw some of the um, presser materials was how you all scanned a nineteen was it a sixty six nineteen sixty six Bronco to uh, get all of the proportions seventy six I think. Oh, it was a seventy six. Yeah, it was my uh, it's my boss's um, truck actually. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Maury Callum, who's our vice president of design. Um, yeah, we, we needed a reference point. So we borrowed his truck and he was kind enough to let us play with it. So how did that inform you all when you were trying to get the proportions of the vehicle? Because, you know, good design is always about all of the proportions. And, the, and this is really very true to the original Bronco. I mean, were you guys able to just kind of take that and scale it up or down as you wanted to? No. Um, <laughs> no. It was, it, it was a really interesting process, actually. Just by way of description, normally when you when you start a program, everything's got to got a big margin for error. You've got these big um, boundaries, and and that you know a, an object or a, a line or a surface or a component can be in, you know, uh, any one of you know two hundred millimeters with a variation in any direction. Um, and then as you develop through the project, you narrow things down to the point where you know it's plus or minus you know zero point zero millimeters. It's it's fixed. Um, with this one, we got into the, the millimeters, single digit millimeters, really fast. Uh, and suddenly we were moving things around. So within our CAD systems, we're able to bring in vast amounts of data. So we had the, um, we had elements that we were going to bring forwards from our, from our platform and from our future component tree. We had desirable attributes to do with approach angles and breakover angles, all that stuff. All the multiplicity of tires that we were going to be working with. Um, and all of the legal zones, everything applied. I mean, it was just, it, it's, it's bedlam to look at. It's chaos. And, um, and in, in the middle of all of this, drops in this, this original generation Bronco, <laughs> looking like this interloper from another galaxy, you know. And um, it was very helpful, not as an effort to try and copy it, but to, to help us uh, quantify the sort of steps that we were going to have to take to get the vehicle where we needed to be. So... In attribute terms, I think it, what we've got is really strong because it's got an unusually aggressive approach angle and breakover angle, and it's, the stance is great, and all of that stuff that that seems sort of natural if you're in this space is really hard to do. And that original scan was really helpful in getting us going. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because on paper, something like the the big Bronco is a very simple design. It's a you know boxy form, and it's dictated by history on some level. But and you've kind of pared it all back and gone for an essentialist look at it. 
Um, but on the other hand, it's a really complicated product because it's got so many different environments that it has to work in and look good in. Uh, mm -hmm. And there are a lot of different configurations with the roof panels, doors off, that sort of thing. How does that inform your design process? And does that make it harder to do than a normal car? S simple is hard. That's the, that's the weird, you know, the, the weirdness of it all. If you want to do a really simple body size, for example, um, you just need one element anywhere within that, that overall global surface to change and everything's screwed up. If, if you were doing a kind of a muscular car with lots of sort of styling features on it, you could maybe just put a bump over this, this element when it comes in, right? You know, modern uh, contemporary road cars are quite complicated to look at. The surfacing is very, you know, very um, exciting. So simple is hard. Um, what helps you keep simple is discipline and sort of knowing what's, what's right. And that, that sort of redacted quality of just making sure that we're, we're not just adding, but we're taking away all the time and cross-examining everything that's there and making sure that it's all there to perform a function was critical in, in uh, disciplining us to, to keep things really simple. But then you're right. Then we were ambitious and we were doing all these, these other things that we wanted to do that were um, unconventional in terms of our normal way of working, right? So like the, uh, the removable doors and the removable roof and the, the way that our upper structure, our canopy works, um, uh, you know, the, the fender flares coming off, all of this stuff and, and laying the vehicle out in a way that it's provisioned, you know, I think quite well for the, the customer to come in and, and play with it and modify it and change it and make it their own and personalize it. Um, that, that, that creates an exciting challenge. Yeah, it's maybe a different mindset to to give somebody a basic building block and say, here, go do with this what you will, customize it. You can't be too precious about the design that you've created saying, you know, don't touch it. I've got it exactly the way it's supposed to look. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, you had said um, in the presser that you could uh, take apart the Bronco with a wrench in an hour. Um, is that a 5 16th wrench or, um, you know, a 10 millimeter? Like, what are we talking about? And how much of the truck can I actually take apart in an hour? <clears throat> so I think what we're trying to say is that with simple tools and not a special tool that you need to get from a dealership, right? Just a simple tool that you'll have in your toolbox that you can engage with this vehicle and you can do it easily. You, it doesn't require any sort of uh, talented engineering or mechanic sort of voodoo. You can just do it. So um, uh, as whether it takes an hour or not, I, th I don't think it's complicated. Mm -hmm. you know? So um, uh, I could do it. And we've spent quite a lot of time working on um, making the process as simple as possible. We don't want people to be intimidated about doing the things that they hope to do with the vehicle because it's complicated. We need to make it as simple as possible. We also need to make it super durable, not fall to pieces accidentally, you know, really, really um, uh, good quality and all of those things as well. So there's a little bit of a tension there, but in, um, to, to use an example of the removable doors, you know, we have to bolt the doors on because we can't have them flying off for all sorts of reasons, obviously. So we, we use a, a bolt to, to secure the door onto the hinges. But after that, you know, there's no check arm to, to remove separately. The check arm is integrated into the door. So that's easy because when you lift the door, the check arm comes with the door. That's, that for me is like a, a nice step in the right direction. And the electrical cu coupling to the door isn't a complicated thing where you've got to lie in the footwell and <laughs> muck about with a cable. It's all of the electrical connection is, is hidden in the door jam and it's just a simple plug, just like pulling something out the back of your computer at home. So, um, Hopefully we've made it easy. We've made something very complicated, actually very accessible. I think well, Emmy I would, and I know exactly what you're talking about I know, I, and have done that way too many times. Yeah. I would personally like to thank you for the fact that the, uh, with the mirrors are on the body of the Bronco and not on the doors. Um, that's always been a big problem with me with the Jeep Wranglers. I love driving a car without the doors. I mean, it's amazing, right? How often do you get the opportunity to do that? And then suddenly you're like, I got to change... Oh, wait, I can't see behind me. <laughs> that, that is a lot harder than it seems. Oh, um, really? Can you explain, like, why is that difficult? So we, we, uh, we, we through our sort of human-centered thinking, we, we arrived at the conclusion that the mirrors needed not to be on the, the doors any longer. <clears throat> and that's okay because, you know, vehicles of old had their mirrors somewhere else. They had them on the fenders all the time. You know, no, no radical reinvention there. But they didn't have the rules and regulations that we have to cope with. 
So mirrors are usually the last bit of the vehicle that you end up finishing the design of because they are so intensely complicated. You know, we have these fields of view that we've got to honor um, for both sides of the vehicle. Um, and then you just need one change and everything's thrown into disarray again. So um, one of the things that makes the field of view harder to achieve is placing the mirror lens further forwards. And that's really what we had to do to get the mirror ahead of the door. So it was a, it was a very tough challenge. Um, and then we had the, the tension also of in being able to see the, the passenger side mirror across the vehicle and clear the instrument panel and all the ceiling and all of the, all the other things we had going on. But um, uh, it was definitely worth the pain. We, we, we had a lot of soul searching uh, to try and try and try and finagle a solution, but it's a good solution. And I'm, I'm glad that you appreciate it. Was there ever a moment where you were like, it's too hard. We just got to put them on the doors. No. Oh, no. good. I mean, there were points where we thought, God, this is really very, very difficult. We're right on the edge here um, of being able to pull it off. But there was no, there was no point where we thought, ah, let's just give up. There's the, we, we do not give up. We just keep going. <laughs> was, was that one of the harder design challenges or what would you say that the, the, the most difficult thing to either develop or fight for to get through all the bean counters uh, to make happen on the production vehicle? Uh, the bean counters, uh, the famous bean counters, that the, the, our bean counters have not been a problem. Um, I think the most difficult thing um, is the volume of ambition that we have actually. Each one in themselves, each, each item in itself, um, if you like, was manageable with a lot of talent and effort and energy and commitment put against it. But when you put all of the ideas together with a, with a collective team sense of, you know, we're going to do this. Um, I, thought, I think that's, that, if you like, was the hardest challenge. But actually, it's been the most satisfying thing to see play out. Um, yeah. How long has this design process taken? Um, it's you know it's a very difficult question. That that question is always hard because it, the design process doesn't have a hard start and it doesn't have a hard finish either. Um, and so it's very difficult to exactly say it's it's this long. Um, I don't want to sound evasive, but that's that's the sort of nature of it. Um, we hadn't really put pen to paper when when uh, Mark Fields announced at uh, NIAS 2017. Um, that we were going to be bringing the vehicle back. I knew it was coming back, but we hadn't really started at that point. I think that um, that's the thing that gets everybody because we've been hearing rumors about a Bronco for so many years. And then it was confirmed then. And we're all like, just looking at our watches going, when is this going to happen? When is this going to happen? And yet the design process really started at that point. And, you know, we've all been hoping since the early 2000s that you guys would bring one back. I mean, you had the, that great looking concept in, was it 04? Mm -hmm. That time frame. Um, and so I, I, I guess we're we're very eager, and we feel like it's been taking forever. But the reality is, is it's the development time has actually been pretty compressed. Yeah, be before the designers pick up their pencils, I mean, there's vast amounts of work that go into the, the sheer logistics of getting getting the, the 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 Ford Global system to to have enough factories and enough space in factories, which of course is interdependent upon other, what's happening with all the other vehicle lines. I mean, there are so many variables that it would just be beyond baffling. So. To get all of that straightened out and have the commitment that we're going to go um, is a body of work which happens before then I get the I get the opportunity to start scribbling things and so then when we start um, it, it's flat out absolutely flat out and um, you know, my my designers uh, will, will will recall this a lot but I, I talk about you know. Um, I use a lot of Formula One references. And so for me, you know, every day is a qualifying lap. Mm. <laughs> we are always on a qualifying lap. And then sometimes, you know, we've got two, two wheels on the grass and it's looking a little bit sketchy. The, 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 the object of the exercise is to always be on the limit. Um, and it's only through being like that that we can, we can take on so much. Um, yeah. Well, you know, there's qualifying in off-road too. So you can move your F1 references to off-road. I will do that. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Bronco largely has been a North American thing, as we talked about right at the beginning of this interview. Mm -hmm. um, is it going to be sold overseas? And as a result of that, if it is, um, did you have to make any design changes to accommodate either the different tastes or the regulatory environments? Yeah, our focus is on the North American markets. Um, uh, so we're not intending to sell in, in Europe, for example. That's li that liberates us to do to do 
to push the vehicle to even more extreme lengths. Um, Europe's got some particularly stringent tyre coverage and pedestrian impact criteria that are specifically tuned to that market. Um, so we've got provisions within the design, but actually without that, that as a burden, we can we can focus on doing what we think is explicitly right for Bronco and explicitly right for the US market. Uh, Paul, what is your favorite design element on the big Bronco and on the sport? Because we haven't really talked a lot about the sport and the sport looks, I mean, I had low expectations for the sport and I'm, yeah, it's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. So like, what's your favorite design element on each? Uh, Well, first of all, the sport is fantastic. Uh, I have to say, I I understand the perception uh, that, that, that it's going to be for someone else. But actually, when we've we've had the, <laughs> I think I explained before. But we, you know, everyone wants to express an opinion on what they think of Bronco, and, and everybody that comes through the studio for the last few years has been expressing an opinion about which one is for them. And it's a three way split: two door Bronco, four door Bronco, Bronco Sport. And so, for those people who who really like the sport, um, I think they're going to be delighted about how capable the vehicle really is. It's extraordinary. Um, you know, I'm not as good at driving off road as you guys, but I've done a bit. But um, it flatters me, makes me as good as our Ford test drivers in leading competitive vehicles. Put it that way. It just seems to be a very accomplished car, and the way it moves and how solid it is, um, it is not, you know, your average vehicle. It is a serious bit of kit, but it's also super comfortable. It's really cute. When I'm driving the prototypes at the minute on the street, people run down their drives and wave at me as I go past. I mean, it's a it's a (laughs) it's it's a phenomenon in its own right. Um, So I'm really pleased with it. What what am I particularly pleased on the sport? Um, uh, I think I I think the the rear area of the vehicle, the cargo space, um, is really clever. It's just super clever. It's so relevant. Anybody who's ever gone camping or you know, try to like me uh, wrestle a, a mountain bike out of the back of the of your of your vehicle, and then you've lost all the bits, and you're going to have to do some you know mechanical work before or afterwards. Knows the problem state; it's an error state. It's a thing gone wrong. So I think we've done a good job at setting the back of the vehicle up to be a great base station for uh, for all of that activity, and that's an activity that frankly should happen you know a long way away from the the road because mm-hmm. it's just so good off road in terms of the bigger bronco the uh, two door and four door what's my favorite feature on that there, there is there are a lot actually um i think we can all take a great deal of pride actually in a bolt <laughs> which probably <laughs> so uh so the the we have these little bronco bolts and uh, they're fitted all over the interior and and the exterior and each each one has got Bronco bashed into the head of it. We spent a lot of time dealing with um, people who were not used to designers being concerned about the appearance of bolts and the accuracy of the font that's knocked into the head of it, um, which was fun in itself. And um, each one of these little Bronco bolts is an invitation to to do something with the vehicle. Um, uh, so it's a little bit of a giveaway. So where they exist, you we've set the vehicle up to to have things attached to it, whether they're lights or racks or mounts for all sorts of things whatever whatever it is whether it's uh, and we have those on the grab handles on the instrument panel and on the console as well so it's an invitation to add things take things off play invent create things uh which is really cool um so i love the bolt so that's sort of an easter egg um and a you know telling thing that we know now every time we see one of those bolts that we can take something off or add something to it yep. what other easter eggs are in there that you can maybe that haven't been divulged yet well, you can't ask, the, the point of an Easter egg is so that you find it, not yeah. that you to ask I mean, the designer to tell you where they are. You know, you got it. You got it. We're, we're stuck <laughs> at home. We're in coronavirus. I'm not going to be able to get my hands on one of these things for a little while. So, you know, give me something here. <laughs> yeah, throw us a throw us a single uh, a single bone. So we have we have got Easter eggs, but um, you know, slightly what bothers me with with some other Easter you'll find on products and other manufacturers is that they're they're playful or a bit jokey, uh, and I don't think that ours should be that. I think ours should be quite purposeful and instructive, actually. So we've got a few. We've got some in the glass, which isn't 
fairly typical place to put them, but we've got them in other places too. We have them in the load area. And actually, I'm quite pleased that when it gets down to it, some of them you'll have probably have to spend some time lying in the dirt with a wrench to find. Emmy, that's your new assignment. I know. I was like, I can't wait. <laughs> Going back to Bronco Sport for a moment, was that vehicle always part of the plan? And was the vision for Bronco as a brand always part of the plan? And I, if, if that's the case, or one way or the other, I imagine that affects the way you approach design. When I started the, the Bronco Sport, um, we'd already started on the, on the Bronco. Um, and I took, we had a little bit of a sketch project. And, I, and the winning theme came from one of my Bronco designers. And so we had to sit down and say, I really love your Bronco theme, but I really, really love your Bronco sport theme. And so what I really like about that uh, is how that he'd managed to distill this sort of essence of, of Bronco into a very different platform. And it, and it just was just such a fit. So that was, that was a really nice part of the journey. They, we, so we kicked off really fast with it uh, and the, the the movement into 3d was was really fast as well so um i'm not sure if that answered your question but that's, yeah, that's the way we began. we talked about briefly um about the 2004 concept and how long we've been waiting for a new bronco and all that was there ever a moment where you decided that or, or thought that maybe you would go in a different design direction with something more modern um or, or was it always we're going in this reductivist historically aware direction i think we i think uh it was we, there was, i don't think anybody had an appetite to create a spaceship you know with with playing to the sort of contemporary tricks of a really fast windshield and a swoopy roof line and loads of wedge in the belt and all of that stuff um because i think we we had a sense of we wanted to ground the new vehicle in and respect its heritage but actually when you get into the into the needs of of uh, of the use of the vehicle, you, you start having to make the vehicle. You know, it's not a question of styling it to look like the original vehicle. Although there are elements of the style of the original in the new one, actually, when it's when you when you want to make the vehicle really slim hipped, uh, when you want to flatten the body sides off so that you clear stuff through narrow gaps. When you want to make the approach angle as aggressive as it is, it means you shorten the front overhang, which means you flatten everything out. When you want to make the visibility forwards really good, you bring the A-pillars back, you make them more upright. You know, One by one, you start automatically um, making the vehicle have that sort of very square-rigged architecture just through sheer function. And if that looks a little bit like vehicles used to be, well, there's a reason why vehicles used to look like that. I think the the newness and the modernity actually in the in the Bronco is the fact that there is just there's very few things out there that look like that that play those play to that um, that story as strongly uh, as we are, um, and it's different. It will really stand out on the road because of it. That that profile is not styled. That's that's reasoned and rationalised to become like that. Did you um, learn anything or or um prioritize anything based on the later Bronco designs of the, you know, the, the late seventies and on into the eighties, because for me, when I look at this model, it, it feels in very much the way that like the Porsche 911 has been a steady evolution uh, and it's beautiful and it's modern, but you tell exactly where it came from. And it feels like Bronco is always, you look at the new model and it feels like this has already existed this entire time on this continuum. Um, but it, you know, kind of goes away from the F-150 based models. And I think that was the right decision, but I'm curious to know if you drew any uh, inspiration from those. Uh, I thought oh, there's a few things going on there. So, um, so a couple of my designers drive the later model Broncos. So they, they're really passionate about them anyway. So we had themes that connected us to that at times. So they were on the wall. We looked at them. Um, uh, I, but I think the purest interpretation of Bronco is, is comes from the original. The later models did share things with other vehicle lines, um, and, I, and, I, and I, you know, I think we all felt that was that was too muddy. You know, we wanted to do something that was explicitly uh, Bronco and its form. And actually, in terms of the scale of it, we talk about the full size Bronco. Actually, when you park the, the new Bronco next to an original one, <laughs> it feels fairly full size. 
you know, it's not a small vehicle, it dwarfs the original, you know. Um, so I think we've got the scale of some of the later vehicles, that impression, but we've got the spirit of the original. Um, we saw the Bronco R run the Baja 1000 this past year, and it was, I mean, it was camouflaged-ish. Did you have anything to do with those those body panels that were out there to fool all of us? Yes. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, 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 the same team that uh, have delivered the Bronco and Bronco Sport, the, the same team that did the Bronco R, uh-huh. uh, at styling and design. And we actually applied a lot of the same methodolo- methodologies um, to to simple things like, I think you've had a ride in it, right? Yes. So yes. did you get to sit in the back seat or the front? I sat in the front. Okay. Well, you know, so we, we put time into making sure that when someone like yourself was getting into the vehicle, that they'd be able to do it without necessarily needing a really long ladder, that we put footholds in the right places. That, that oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we, we worked hard on actually sort of uh, thinking through the process of, of clambering into it. So we actually had designers climbing on the clay models in the studio uh in an effort to try and reason it out really we did so um so that some of the the sort of human centered methodology went into that truck as well that was a really fast process um we wanted to do a few things with it uh we wanted to um reintroduce the, the sort of two box profile uh which we did even though we were sort of two it's like the two-door look but over a uh, four-door wheelbase um we wanted to introduce some real key graphic elements so the very simple square opening at the front we didn't put the round lights in but if mm-hmm. you actually look back at those original images or, or the images of the bronco R, you'll see there's a light bar that goes from co- coast to coast right across the middle which is not dissimilar to the bar that we'll have on the new vehicle and then there are three light bars above that bar and three light bars below it and they, mm-hmm. they're positioned to mimic uh, specifically one of the grills that we'll be launching with the Bronco. Um, the, the tow hooks on the front, they, they will look very similar to something that you'll see. And we could walk our way through the rest of the vehicle and you, I could identify things that we drew, uh, drew out of the production car. But the trick for the balance for us was making sure that none of it was too obvious. Right, right. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was a strong truck. It was a really fun project, uh, enjoyable fast and so it was know, just it was the other job as well you know we did it as well as everything else um i imagine you're taking delivery of one of these vehicles um so if that's the case i want to know how you've optioned yours you know what trim and what color what does it look like because we've done ours and we know exactly the one that we would buy if we could buy one so i yeah, want to know what yours is yes yeah yeah okay so i haven't specced mine yet um oh. and um <laughs> and it's definitely either a two door or four door and it's and it's almost certainly in one of three colors and it could quite possibly be a base spec or a black diamond uh, or it might be another one but it's definitely got 35s on it so i've really narrowed it down i have spent a lot of time over the last few years trying to work out what the ideal spec is and i still haven't pulled it off the good news is you can probably make up your own ideal spec i would think well yeah you can't you can't blame a fella for sitting in idle moments with a pen and a piece of paper, dreaming it all up. So we, n- we never rest. We never stop. We're, we're constantly moving. So who knows? Maybe, maybe my ideal spec is one that we haven't done yet. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we yes, are very, you, very excited to get uh, behind yeah. the wheel of this vehicle. Um, Emmy's very excited to see it in person. I fortunately have seen it already. And uh, it's... I think you guys have done an amazing job. Um, we are genuinely, genuinely excited about this vehicle. Yes. Great. So are we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're very proud. Good. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Well, as you can see, we're super excited about this Bronco, and I hope you are too. Let us know in the comments what your favorite feature is. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe because we've got a lot of cool content coming up.